mine. You know you can't wear red to the Olympus Ball. Can't I? I'm going to. This is 1852, Dumplin. 1852, not the Dark Ages. Girls don't have to simper around in white just because they're not married. My first memory of Betty Davis is of a powerful image burning on a small screen. When I was a girl in the 60s, I'd come home from school and I'd turn on the old movie channel and plunk down on the couch with my girlfriends and take lessons from Betty Davis on how to scare the hell out of a man. <laughs> All I know is that kid sister of mine came back here again last night and nobody's seen her since. And get this straight. If I find out that you or anybody else has laid a finger on her... You'll what? I'll get you, even if I have to crawl back from my grave to do it. Some 30 years later, when I received the first annual Betty Davis Lifetime Achievement Award at Boston University, I was very, very, very honored. To even be uh, mentioned in the same breath as Betty Davis um, is sort of a dream come true. For me, Betty Davis stood out from other actresses because of her signal audacity. I have only a sketchy understanding of the studio system as it existed in the 30s and 40s, how studios owned stars, how Miss Davis defied Warner Brothers in her determination for better scripts, and how her career suffered at times for that defiance. But the audacity I'm talking about is the bravery of her work. You dirty swine! I never cared for you, not once. I was always making a fool of you. You bored me stiff. I hated you. It made me sick when I had to let you kiss me. I only did it because you begged me. You hounded me. You drove me crazy. And after you kissed me, I always used to wipe my mouth. Wipe my mouth! Betty Davis just seemed willing. She even had an appetite for parts that were conventionally unappealing. She changed the requirement that actresses in the movies invariably be likable or attractive. She lifted the veil of appropriate behavior in women to expose what was scary, unexpected, or ugly. In other words, to do what was appropriate for the character. Go on, torture me. Go on, torture me. You like making fun of me, don't you? You think it's fun making fun of me, don't you? I Betty Davis was always a little brighter, smarter, if sometimes deviously so, a little more ambitious, single-minded, and for a small woman, she just stood a little taller than anyone else in the room. You dare turn your back on Elizabeth of England? You dare? <laughs> As a little girl, it just it made me feel good. It made me feel significant to watch her. My darling, you are crying. Oh, I'm such a fool. Such an old fool. These are only tears of gratitude. An old maid's gratitude for the crumbs of it. Don't talk like that. You see, no one ever called me darling before. When I was first starting out as a young actress, Betty Davis uh, wrote me a letter, <laughs> and I almost died. In it, she said a very dear thing. She said she was proud of me, like we were related, uh, and that I reminded her of herself when she was younger, and that she hoped we'd have the chance to work together someday. As far as I'm concerned, we have been working together because Betty Davis has been working her inspiration on me since those days when I was a little girl. Along with all the actresses of my generation, I am a direct beneficiary of Betty Davis's will and determination. Some will wind up in the short end, but not me, baby. I know all the angles, and I think I'm smart enough to keep one step ahead of them because of her hard-fought achievements, we all had it a little easier. For Turner Classic Movies and for Betty Davis, I'm Meryl Streep. <laughs>